Good morning everyone, it's Jelani. The morning scripture came from the Gospel of John chapter 16, chapter 16. And then afterwards we'll do a recap from chapter 10. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for yet another day of life that you have preserved for us. You have been faithful in all things, Lord Jesus, and we give you thanks. For you are our strength, our healer, our redeemer, our king, our everything. No one of this world can do what you will and can do for us. And we just pray that we are using you as an example to do to one another as we will have them do unto us or do unto others as you have taught us so that all glory goes back to you for we do nothing of ourselves. And in doing so, Lord Jesus Christ, it falls right back to the saying, the faithful saying, that we ought to love one another, even as you have loved us, so we ought to love one another. And this love is not as the world shows it, but as you showed it. Not the love that is tied up with the cares of this life or the conditions of this life or the love that transcends this world the love that is above all things because it belongs to you and you are the only one that can give it and that can reveal it in us thank you dear lord for keeping us strong and i pray for each and every soul that is broken each and every soul that is in need of help, that you make swift intercession, Lord Jesus Christ, and that we all may be strengthened to continue in this life on that straight and narrow path, continuing throughout all the tests and trials without falter, without fainting, without failure without delay or deference but strength by strength step by step Lord Jesus Christ we are able to persevere endure hope and believe on you in all things and having done so Lord Jesus that we may be true witnesses of you and even if we have marred our witness in some way, shape or form by disobedience or going astray from you, as we prayed initially, you are our Redeemer and you are more than able to set us back on right standing with you. I only ask, dear Lord, that we, you cause it so that we do not ever depart from standing on that shore rock which you are. Lord Jesus, help us to, uh, to minister and to show unto the youth what it, it truly means to be a man, what it truly means to be a woman, which those things are what you created perfectly from the beginning and we know through disobedience and sin that's where corruption came in but nevertheless you are able to teach us what it really means to be made in your image Lord Jesus Christ even the image of your church also so Lord Jesus let us do so to the youth and to one another let all our lights not be dim or shine ever so bright Whilst we even go through the shadow of the valley of death, 
let us fear nothing of this world and even if you have some of us in isolation make it be so that when we do reappear on the other side we shall be more strengthened in you holy and acceptable ready for your use one towards another and lord jesus that you continue to help to sustain to promote to nurture and put your hedge of protection around godly marriages the union the pursuit and the longevity of what you intended from the beginning for man and woman to be to be modeled in your image even the image of christ and his church continue lord jesus with us all so we can glorify you with all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ to the glory of god our heavenly father we pray amen all right john chapter 16 these things have i spoken unto you that ye should not be offended they shall put you out of the synagogues Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall see, sorry, a little while, verse 16, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is it that he saith unto us, a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father? They said, therefore, what is this that he saith, a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them do ye inquire among yourselves of that i said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me verily verily i say unto you that ye shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy a woman when she is in travail hath sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. 
and ye know therefore and ye now therefore have sorrow but i will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you and in that day ye shall ask me nothing Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the father his disciples said unto him so now speakest thou plainly and speaketh no proverb now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee by this we believe that thou camest forth from god jesus answered them do ye now believe Behold, the hour, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Lovely. Lovely chapter. Now we're going to skip back to chapter 10. And I didn't reread it, so I might miss out some stuff. But let's have a recap of what we read in the week. Heading on my Bible says, Christ is the good shepherd his unity with the father so chapter 10 what was it about all right it's talk about the um the sheepfold the rubber coming in right coming up some other way anybody come up some other ways and rubber thief and a rubber right talking about the sheep would hear his voice and shall follow after him and this is a good thing to remember especially when like for for just life just to think on the times that we don't hear the voice of christ and we're gonna stray on our own things and fall into sin right With, yes 100 percent, and i can testify of this like if the lord does tell us to do things and sometimes we go off to do our own thing because we think that what we do, like we know better than God pretty much, right? The Lord might say, do this. And you're like, no, but if I do this, it might end up that this bad thing might happen. And you end up doing what you think is right. And it makes it worse, right? Let's follow his voice. And as I said, all our runs up when we can look back and say, well, I can see if I'd followed the Lord that I would have been in his in, in a good stance with him, right? Wouldn't have been um wouldn't have strayed away and any strain away from the Lord is gonna end up in sin. Full stop. Right? There is no there is no going around that. Alright. So Jesus again was speaking about he's the door, pretty much showing that he is the only one that leads us unto the good pasture, right? Showing that he's the only one that can lead us to the Father. Right? And um 
he's he's not just saying that he's a shepherd but the good shepherd because we know that we have shepherds of like your farmers you have different like in every, any industry you have different people like you have you might have a good and you might have a bad but yet still they are that person right they are a farmer they are a, a teacher they are a doctor whatever right but i like that he said he's the good shepherd as i remember when i was reading this and i remembered oh they make sure to make sure tell us christ make sure to make sure tell us what kind of shepherd he is he didn't just leave it blanket statement say i'm a shepherd and leave us to figure out like is he what kind of shepherd is no he is the good shepherd and again it gives the example of what the good shepherd would do he lay down his life for his sheep right his sheep would hear his voice and as i said sometime will go astray and again we are thankful that he is a shepherd that would leave the 99 for the one and for this last several months like that is one verse that's been just drumming into my mind leaving the 99 for the one and i think the lord just wanted to put that into perspective to understand what he meant by that not that he neglected the 99 for the one no but he left the 99 in his safety because we know that the 99 would have been abiding in his safety in his gates right in his protection where the one has left that he will still yet go after that one he won't leave them to utter destruction and we can all testify that we have been that one right and we want to be part of the 99 who abide in him right um cool verse 11 chapter 11 there's much more stuff as i said this is just a recap of some of the stuff that may have jumped out at me throughout the week if i remember them all all right so chapter 11 dealt with um lazarus and again i find this i find this chapter very i remember when the lord like used this chapter to just open up my understanding on his love for us and what unbelief does to him right because ultimately he wants us to believe on him if you do a word study on the word believe just do it even just for one book just do it in in the book of john do a word study on how much that time the lord speaks about believing on him because again he knows who he is like there's no it, it doesn't need you to believe on him to know who he is he knows who he is he know where he stands he know where he came from and whither he goeth right christ knows that he is christ what he wants is for us to know that so that we can be saved right so that we can leave off our own understanding and hold fast unto him and again everything it happens for a reason if we read this chapter we saw where everything was set up that it it happened how it happened right I believe jesus got wind or got word that um that's how us was sick jesus could we saw examples throughout the gospel where Jesus just said the word and the person was healed. I, remember, I think it was this guy and his servant was sick or his son was sick. Don't quote me, I forgot. But Jesus said the word to him. And when the guy went back, he said, the, 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 the child, I think it was his son was healed or was his servant. Don't quote me on that. My mind just had a lapse just now. But the person was healed. The story said the person was healed. And he said, what hour did the person start to recover and then he knew that it was the same hour that jesus said that he liveth right we have evidence of jesus um doing all of these miracles but what did he do when he had got word that lazarus was sick i remember he loved he knew lazarus he, he loved them like mary lazarus and martha he abideth in the same place for the purpose that he wanted him to like like die right although when he said he slept his disciples didn't get the gist of it he, he had to make it clear like no lazarus is dead 
and I'm and I'm glad that I wasn't there in the tent that you will what believe right where where is it verse 14 he said then Jesus said unto them plainly Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sakes that it, I was not there to the intent that ye may believe nevertheless let us go unto him right and remember that people were out to kill Jesus at this time so hence why Thomas was like let's go with him so we may die with him right because Thomas like well we were going to be joining Lazarus today because these these um these Jews of late seek to kill us did it well did it say Jews of late anyway yeah yeah verse 8 yeah so um again Jesus went this time Lazarus was dead dead like he would have been if it was like if it was a regular case of body dying and there would be decomposition um rigor mortis would have set in by the time that jesus got there and jesus again that word on the believe the believe the believe believe because they had some belief because even when um who saw him first martha right said lord if thou has been here my brother had not died so she believed like like christ was able to save him but she still her, her understanding was limited in that she just thought he had to be there for it to happen right because we have this scripture now don't get me wrong right we can say oh but jesus can raise the dead but because we have these scriptures right th this was happening in real time so did somebody had been raised from the dead after four was it four days four days yeah would have been like unheard of right so again they had some belief but it just wasn't it wasn't full it wasn't complete and the part that i wanted to just lead to again again jesus just banging on and just believe on him just believe that i am who i am the resurrection and the life and we saw the emotions of Christ here. And I said, this again, just in a time, just made so much sense to me. Because even though Jesus had done all these things and um, said all these things, yet they didn't believe him. And we saw where the people were agree, like sorrowing and weeping and all of that stuff. And this, again... Jesus groaned in his spirit, as it says here, and was troubled. How I always saw this read before the Lord opened up my understanding to it was like people think that, oh, Jesus, but oh, because he, and to be honest, even the people then, like, that's what they perceived. Oh, how he loved him because they thought he was just grieving because of this. Remember, this is Christ. Christ know what, who he is. Like, he had no doubt right because he had if he had doubt then he couldn't be christ he had no doubt that he was able to raise lazarus from the dead he knew that for that purpose why he delayed it reaching there and why he's there now to do this to show the glory of god what grieved the spirit is the unbelief right and him have doing all and said all and showed all the, the manifesting the power and the might and the glory of the father yet still we as mankind still didn't believe on him and we saw where jesus wept and um and again this again shows how long-suffering he is towards us and how yeah that's the perfect how long-suffering he is towards us even in our folly and our unbelief right and i said remember this was being scripted as it happened like people are saying oh how we loved him yes he loved him we know this but it weren't the fact that lazarus was dead why christ was crying why he wept should i say 
right? It was due to them not believing on him. Because again, if we think that Christ was weeping because Lazarus was dead, that makes, even if you just look it, just out of, just it, forget the Bible for a time and let's just look at it in layman's term. You know that you have the, the power to raise somebody from the dead, right? You can just raise somebody from the dead. And the person dies. Why would you grieve that person when you can, like, in the moment, like, if the person dropped them, put it, you just put it, and they raise up back, like, they're, they're, it makes no sense, right? So, again, you can, if if you believe I'm wrong, or you think the understanding that I'm sharing is wrong, then, again, just have a word study, even just in this chapter about Christ saying, believe, believing on him, and then, again, think of what he has done, um, because remember when he was first told Lazarus wasn't dead you know he was just sick right and I think two days yeah he was sick first verse 6 right so again just use all of this use it in all in its context and then just go back to that part where Jesus wept and just look at everything leading up to that right and I said the reason I'm taking so much time on this chapter because this is a chapter that really resonated with me and the Lord use it to help me, to strengthen me, to understand what it means to believe on him, right? And yeah, ultimately, he rose Lazarus from the dead, which he knew he was going to do. He had no doubt, as I said, right? And again, the people saw it and many believed on him, right? Because this was never seen before, right? And as I said, Jesus Jesus what done all things so that we he uses all these things for that we may believe that he was sent of God from God the son of God came to redeem us from our death and destruction he's manifesting the glory of our eternal heavenly father right God with us Emmanuel right so chapter 12 I just um, go through this again. What always cracks me up is the fact that Jesus still did all of these things. And what did people, some decide to do in unbelief? The, 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 primarily the, the Pharisees and the, um, the Pharisees and the Jews, the priests or chief priests. Sorry, the ch chief priests, yeah, verse 10. They want, they was consulting to kill Lazarus. Right, this is it. May, like, like on the like from from where we stand, having the holy scripture, like this makes no sense. Like you just see this man raise somebody from the dead that you know because some of your people were there. Some people came back a report like this is so. We know that Lazarus was dead. We know that we buried him. We know that Jesus wasn't even there when he died. So it's not like he consulted or orchestrated this. He came afterwards and raise this one from the dead and yet still their first insight was you know what so that people don't believe on him any further let we let we get rid of him and let we even get rid of this lazarus because because of lazarus many people are now believing on him right again show the showing the the mindset of the enemy steal kill and destroy right and um Jesus again yeah just um again the people many people started to believe on him they actually start acknowledge like no this is the one the redeemer the one that the Hosanna blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord right the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord so people really started to announce Acknowledge that this is the one that was prophesied to come, right? And um, Jesus again just went on to teach some more, foretelling his death, also. 
and then again showing why he came and who sent him like why he was there okay so chapter 13 okay this is mr judas iscariot was now planning up to betray him right jesus washing the, the feet of his um of his of his disciples and again the zealousness we can learn from these things because sometimes we say things in our zeal that it, it might we might be overzealous should i say right because we can learn and like i said i don't i don't look down on anyone in the scripture when i read of them because we we'll, i learn from them right both the good and the bad i can learn from because who are we we are who <laughs> yeah yeah who are we yeah? so yeah watch his, his disciples feet all right judas was pointed out right because jesus was speaking about somebody's gonna betray him everybody was like looking at themselves like who like who because you can imagine like everybody must have been showing their best self so all the other disciples looking at each other like who it is because we never really see anybody of that sense who is going to betray because even judas iscariot would have been putting on a show but the christ knows our hearts and it so again jesus pointed him out there and then jesus just went on to tell them some more comfort them i guess and um yeah and he went on to verse 14 again leading on to christ again comforting his disciples starting off let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god believe also in me that word believe again right again the, 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 the disciples they're questioning him and i'm glad that they questioned him because we have the record of these answers here also because they were willing you know sometime back in the day when you're in the class and the teacher might say something and nobody gets it and then one person like miss what such and such mean and then the teacher would explain and everybody is like oh okay thank you for that one person that asked the question because everybody would have just sat there in 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 ignorance where that one person was bold enough to ask a question allowed everybody else to get the understanding thomas i know people call him doubting thomas and that man i call him that i don't well if i'm referring to like people calling him that but to be honest all of us have been doubters so i don't look down that's what i'm trying to say i don't look down on him and say oh he's a doubting disciple no we can learn from him learn from the things that he asked because he would have been uh, genuinely wanting to know these things and it he said jesus he said lord we know not not with our no voice and how can we know the way jesus again confirming that he is the way the truth and the life that no man cometh unto the father but by him again philip being one asking like lord just show us the father and it would suffice us because we as human beings we need to see every single thing sir, for sir, every single detail sir sometime for us to believe but what did christ say it showed you like it's plainly in front of your eyes if you only will open your eyes to see if the answer is there you don't so in that breath he said philip have i not been such long where is it have i been so long time with you and yet thou has not known me philip again showing that the answer was there all along but the eyes was you just couldn't see it right and as again we're not looking down at philip we're learning from philip 
right? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. How saith then show us the Father? Again, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, God with us, the glory of the Heavenly Father, full of grace and truth. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe. Right. And then Jesus was again speaking about the Comforter, being the Holy Spirit that we sh who are his shall obtain, because he goeth back to the Father and he will send it. Send the Holy Spirit in his name. Again, showing who he would manifest himself to. Those who believe on him. Those who love him. Those who are his. Right. Keeping his saying. And as again, we know. Again, hold hands up when we keep not his saying. We are diverting from him, manifesting himself to us. And in this, we do ask for forgiveness, Lord. Let's even ask for forgiveness nor now. And that he causes it so that we are back on the right path. Right? Holy Spirit teaching us all things. Verse 15. Again, we started this recap talking about jesus saying he's a good shepherd now he's making similar um, comparison of himself being the true vine again true vine again not just the vine but the true vine right i like the, the adjectives are they adjectives true good describing words yeah my english is a bit rusty there but he put something before the vine to make us know what kind of vine it is, right? Again, showing why we need to abide in him. Showing where the, 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 the root and the sustenance of us all come from, from him. Right? Showing his love that he has for us. And, yes. Showing that we need to love him by listening to what he says right this is the only way we can truly show that we love him if we believe on him and do what he has commanded us and again what did he say this is my commandment that ye love one another as i have loved you i think i just said that in prayer greater love hath no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Again, it's a good reminder. And um said, again, don't think that we ever chose God first. Like, we love him because he first loved us. He chose us, right? We didn't choose him. We choose him eventually. But it's not like he was, like, not for us and then we chose no he was always for us he chose us from the beginning to love us and ultimately he showing us his love towards us he caused us to choose him and to love him and we love him by loving one another again just giving us some reminder that love is not conditional on anything it, it transcends anything. It's, there's no conditions to love. And this is how he wants us to love. Because again he shows us. <coughs> these things I command you. That ye love one another. Again it just goes on and say. If the world hate you. Know that he hated me before he hated you. He said we're not supposed to love the world. Right. Love not the world nor the things in the world. If we love the world. Then the love of the father is not in us. Right, but we can love one another, those who are his and even those who are our enemies, because he has again tells us how to love her unconditionally. Right? If he just loved those ones who loved him, then none of us would be here today because we all hated God through sin, and all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
so again summing up as showing that love is the premise in which all things abide in which we we overcome all things and yeah yeah in which we overcome all things in this world is true love not as the world give but as christ gave and shows us he said he's chosen us out of the world again showing us that the servant is not greater than the master and if we suffer for his sake this again showing that we're going to always always point back to the fact that we're going to suffer for christ's sake why do we have to suffer for christ's sake because unfortunately in this present life there is still evil present and for love to transcend throughout all evil, for good to prevail over all evil, sufferation is always going to be there because evil is evil. Evil is evil towards good, but good should be good without condition, right? As Christ has shown us, right? So, hence why there is always going to be suffering for Christ's sake. But the good thing, I don't leave it at that. The good thing to know is the fact that though we suffer for Christ in this life, in the life to come where he has a place as i said he goes to prepare a place for us i think one of the preceding chapters talk about that in that place that we are going to abide with him forever and ever there will be no evil present there because judgment will have passed and he would have separated the wheat from the tears the goat from the the, the, the sheep from the goat right there's clear separation there in that final judgment those who are his who abide who had abided in him in this world shall inherit life eternal the good eternal life in which abideth no evil nor sorrow nor pain nor any such thing so hence why we still look for the life to come because if this was life was it then we could have said like eh, it's not really stacked up for what we really want because as i said if we if we existed in this life eternally then it goes to show that god would have been infinitely just because if we abided in this life eternally that means evil and good would be um always neck to neck and neck like in this world there would be this always knowing that there is evil we can do evil or evil can be done against us but because god is good he's given us all in this life this maximum permissible time to get right with him so that in the day that he does come to judge and to give a reward to those who choose what side they stand on, hence who chose the good or who chose the evil, he shall give them those things for eternity. Because he's eternal God and he wants to abide for eternity with those who is going to, sorry, is going to abide in, with, in eternity for both sides. Only thing there's a difference in those who abide in his eternal goodness and those who abide in his eternal wrath and i do know for certain no none of us wants to be on the side that abide in his eternal wrath right again it just ended off there and said but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Again, knowing Christ on that level. That's what we want. To know him. And knowing him, as I said, there's going to be the need for us to suffer for his sake. But again, knowing him is the best thing that we can do in this life so that we can overcome this world. <laughs> And then chapter 16, which we just read. All right. Again, it started off these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be offended. All right. And then God again, Christ showing us that people are going to be deceived into thinking that they're serving God when they're not. All right. He said, don't get it twisted. They're going to put you out of. The synagogues are going to do all of this manner of things against you. Some of them are going to even kill you, I believe it says. Thinking that they're doing God's service. Again, showing that there is deception. And we have the scriptures to even show one prime example of like Paul, who was Saul. 
um, persecuting the church, thinking that he was truly serving God until the light of Christ blinded him, right? Because it, he was in deep darkness, so the light had to shine throughout all that darkness. And what was so bright that it blinded him, um, but just for temporarily that the scales could be taken off and that he could see clearly who Christ really was and is. Right? So... Yeah, what we read today again, the Holy Ghost promised is expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, verse 7, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Again, Christ showing that God with us when he was physically here, he go away so that God could abide in us all through his spirit. But we still look for God to abide with us. In physicality in the form of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but whilst we have this life to complete we are comforted to know him by him abiding in us through his Holy Spirit right one father and, and fa one God and father of all which is above all and through all and in you all right one God so yeah Again, Christ didn't just leave us without these words of encouragement or without comfort because we all need comfort. Again, he gave that example of verily, verily, verse 28, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And gave the comparison a woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour is come but as soon as she is delivered of the child she remembereth no more the anguish for that a man is born into the world again if we just even look at it figuratively showing that in this life, we're going to have our heartaches, we're going to have our sorrow, we're going to have our trauma that we're going to go through. And putting out, I get, I, when, when these things are delivered from us, I, we can forget the things of the past. Because again, there is something that is good that is coming out of it. And, um, yeah, maybe never said it. Fully. I was thinking on something else with that but again Christ just again showing that he is our comforter right again saying that anything that we ask in the father name in his name to the father should I say I don't know if I, if, if, even what I said just now is still right because if we ask in the father's name because Christ said he comes in the name of the father so again even that saying but just to clarify if we ask anything in his name, to our heavenly Father, it shall be granted us. But again, the scriptures have talked. We want to ask those things which are according to his good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will. And somebody might ask, Jelani, what is the point of asking then if it has to be according to his good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will? And I'll ask the question, why would you not want to ask something according to his good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will? Because anything outside of his good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will is evil, unacceptable, imperfect, and unholy. Why well, would want to ask for those things, right? So, but just like that, Christ throughout the scripture encourage us to be strong, even in our suffering. And these words have encouraged me this morning and uplifted my spirit, knowing that. In all things, we even when we are not in power to do things of our own selves, all we have to do is pray and ask that he intervenes, that he strengthens us all, and that we are drawn closer to him in all seasons of life. So I'm going to leave it at that this morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that this morning. Anything that you want to share as always.
you can drop it in the comment section or send it in to the word at eachreach1.org and as much as the lord has led me taught me and kept me over the years i will answer them according to his word according to his principles according to his will be led by his holy spirit have a blessed day everyone and god's willing we'll catch up again tomorrow